back to book it seemed that i'd only been asleep a few minutes when i awoke the pillbox was a mass of moving men with apparently no pattern a deep dull throbbing filled my head accentuated by a fierce pounding that pushed relentlessly against my temples i jumped from the bunk with a start the throbbing in my head was a big gun firing the man seated there by the table was covered with a dull brown dust blood was streaming from a gash in his forehead a tank's firing right at us captain sparky said excitedly they hit the head they hit the shed with the mortarman in it sergeant patterson got a cut in the head I tried to shake the cobwebs of sleep from my brain. I had been asleep for hours. It was daylight. It was 8 o'clock in the morning. I moved over to the wounded man. He was Sergeant Lee Patterson, a North Carolinian, and one of the squad leaders from the mortar section. The wound was bleeding profusely. Another man held a handkerchief immediately below it to prevent blood from running into the sergeant's eyes. It's not bad, the sergeant said. The sergeant said, Just a cut from some loose brick. It was flying all around the cellar when the shells hit looks worse than it is i guess so now they're they're under attack and i'm I'm, you're gonna notice a pattern i don't know if i'll cover it enough but this poor guy this poor guy uh mcdonald captain mcdonald it seems like every time they get a major attack he's getting awoken from being asleep because he's not (laughs) sleeping very often but every time he puts his head down you see almost every time he gets awoken or every time they receive a major attack it's because he's asleep and boom all of a sudden things start happening he he must have been so paranoid to go to sleep knowing Mm -hmm. that this stuff was was hanging over his head so they're getting this pretty pretty big coordinated attack and then some aircraft show up some some p-47 shows up uh, like five p-47 shows up and here's the description of that each plane circled high into the air and came down with the skill and grace of a pirouetting dancer upon its target the bullets from its cannon beating a staccato chant of death as it dived on the germans below someone behind me said oh them goddamn beautiful birds we watched in silent admiration as the planes climbed once again well their work's done for the day someone said Yeah, a mortarman answered, reaching for a shovel. They'll go home now and have a short scotch and a hot bath and shack up with some mademoiselle or some limey wench. What a life. Yeah, and draw double salary for it, a headquarters man put in. That's the life for me. Willie Hagen said, oh, dry up. You never had it so good. So that's that's a common thing, you know, and we're going to get Dave Burke on here, and I'm sure we'll hassle him about being a pilot. I mean... That is, you go, you, you do your mission, and then you're flying back to base. Mm-hmm. And the bases are in friendly areas and they're protected, so you're going to get a short scotch and a lawn on a hot bath. 